Good day and peace be with you, our dear Polinians. In five minutes, our third session for the LEAD program will start. You may get a paper and pen for your note-taking and some snacks or drinks if you have to. See you in a bit, dear Polinians. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Life Skills Enhancement and Development Program aims to provide sessions to teach the basic day-to-day -day knowledge, skills, and values this academic year. In today's session, our goal is for the young Polonians to explore and widen their understanding to life skills and its relation to livelihood and occupations in various industries. I am Ms. Mary Jo Ann Marquez, your facilitator for today's session. Before we begin, let us ask the guidance and grace of the Lord. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord as we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please show me how to spend this day sharing your love in every way. Help me to be kind to everyone, to play and love and have lots of fun, shining your light and giving your grace, sharing your joy with a smile on my face. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here. Ever this day, be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Mary, our mother and model, pray for us. St. Paul, our patron, pray for us. Father Louis Chauvet and the First Sisters, intercede for us. May the love of Christ impels us now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, good morning and peace be with you all. What do you want to be when you grow up, kids? Some of you may want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an astronaut, or maybe a teacher like me. These dreams may be related to your interests, talents, or what you can see and hear on your environment. Whatever dreams you have at this moment, learning is still part of the process to fully know what would you like to be. For our gentle reminders for today's session, Canva Live will be launched for your questions, concerns, or thoughts about our session. This will be addressed during the question and answer part of our program. Please visit the site and enter the code 745140. I repeat, visit the site Canva Live and enter the code 745140. To discuss further this topic and share her knowledge about it, let me introduce to you our resource speaker. Our resource speaker for this morning is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Psychology in Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila and has taken her master's degree in psychology, major in industrial psychology in the same university. She has also taken her Master of Arts in Counseling in the La Salle University, Manila. She is a registered guidance counselor and psychometrician. She is well-versed in developing program on various career and human resource areas and has experiences in facilitation, counseling, and coaching. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming our very own guidance counselor, Miss Vanessa L. Agrees. Let us give her a virtual clap. Good morning, Miss Vanessa. Hi, good morning to all of you. And thank you for that introduction, Miss Joanne. And also for um, introducing the topic already. No? So uh, next slide, please.
And so, Miss Joan asked you a while earlier, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? So, usually we hear this question from our parents, no, from our teachers' answer. Because we usually are aware what are our parents are doing. No? For example, they are also working in the office. They are also teachers or doctors or policemen, firefighter. Okay. Um, and we also see this from our neighbors. No? But... As you can see from this picture, there are a lot of other jobs that you can do, okay? Uh, in the U.S. or United States, they have what they call ONET Online. It's a website where they list um, the available jobs and job titles in the United States. So, um, it lists around a thousand, no? uh, more than a thousand uh, occupations and jobs in the United States. In the Philippines, we also have that um, Peel Job Net, no? but it's still a work in progress. So it's not yet fully uh, functional. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot. No, we there are what we call uh, trade jobs wherein you need to use your skills, no? like the plumber, the welder, okay, um, and even the firefighters, no, uh, the policeman, no. We also have professionals. Um, this is what we call blue collar job or white collar jobs, like the teachers, doctors, no, those that are working in the office. Okay, so professionals mean to say you have to. Uh, have a college degree no in order to get to these jobs and we also have the unskilled no um unskilled in terms of um they don't require much in terms of requirements no so even if you are a high school uh graduate or uh, even if you want to do a part-time job or a summer job no someday you can take on this kind of task or jobs okay um uh, next uh, slide, please. Okay. So, we hear the word career no, early on. So, what is a career? So, career is a series of jobs during our life. No, um, It it will form uh, a part of your life. No, Like, for example, your childhood, no, your adulthood. A uh, career is what you will be doing no, in terms of your occupation. Okay. Well, a job is a specific uh, occupation. No? For example, as a teacher. Okay, but uh, in when you say career, like for me, I worked as a human resource manager. Uh, I worked as a part-time teacher, and uh, now I am a guidance counselor. So that is my career. Okay, but my job, no, for three years I used to be in human resource. No, for for uh, one year I used to be a part-time teacher, and so that is uh, the difference between the career and the job okay so um now a job can be paid or unpaid no so paid of course you know when you say paid uh we have a salary no because of course we need money to pay for bills no for our food to buy clothing uh uniform we also need to pay for our transportation no but sometimes there are tasks that are unpaid Okay, so um, uh, what are those unpaid jobs? Now, those are some volunteer works that we do. Okay, so advocacy, like for example, in our community uh, services. Okay, so some of the people who help us are volunteers. No, we don't pay them. Okay, sometimes we give them food, but not really a, a salary or um, a, a regular money no, that they get paid for the task that they do okay so um look at our i uh, no, no, our favorite superheroes they do paid and unpaid jobs so let us see no if you can uh guess no so superman for example okay that is his unpaid job okay so he doesn't get paid to be superman Okay, so he does that to help people, no, to to use his power for for good. Okay, but his day job or his paid job is as a reporter. So Clark Kent, no, his alter ego is a reporter or a journalist. Okay, so who else, no? So related to the job of Superman is that of Spider Man. Okay. So, Spider-Man is a photojournalist, 
Okay, so again, Spider-Man, that is his unpaid job. So, photojournalist, no? Uh, he takes photos and he sells it to newspapers. Okay, so next, our next superhero. Uh, so, Captain America. Okay, so he used to be a soldier, right? Before he... Uh, Big, uh, before he had an experiment, no, he volunteered to be part of an experiment, making him stronger and faster, no, and then he became a uh, Captain America. Okay, so next, our next superhero uh, is uh, Wonder Woman. Okay, so Wonder Woman, her job is an art restorer. Okay, so um. Also, aside from being a Wonder Woman, she is also a princess, right? In uh, in her kingdom. Also, he does that. No part of that is just her responsibility. But that is not a paid job. Okay. So as uh, art restorer, what she does is to um, uh, when there is a damage, like for example, this uh, statue. No, there's crack or some discoloration. No, uh, she. Uh, re, uh, repairs those. No? So that is the job of an art restorer. Okay. And then our last uh, superhero is the Flash. So are you familiar with the Flash? And so the Flash, his job is a um, forensic uh, scientist no? or a forensic detective. So what he does is he collect evidences and then uh, studies them and uh, try to determine no, how the the victim died how or how the crime was committed no? so some of them do this no like the flash superman they do this alongside with their being a superhero but for like for example si captain america uh, he was no longer a soldier okay uh, because he was a soldier during the war okay but now at the moment he focuses on his job as a as a captain america or as a superhero so most of us do that no? uh, simultaneously so next slide please okay. so why do we do uh unpaid jobs no um sometimes you would hear this no what is your passion okay what are the things that you love to do okay so we do this because sometimes we are in a job where we get paid no like for me i am a guidance counselor but there are also things that i love to do wherein i can help others so i do volunteer work no so i i work with organizations that offers also counseling for those who uh who cannot afford to pay okay so i don't get paid for that no it also uh give back no so i i used to um also volunteer in in other schools no and like in uh, PLM no where i studied for college i volunteered as a um as a counselor also because uh for for a way to give back because the school um gave me an opportunity no so i am just giving back uh, okay and also to enhance my skills no like for example um there are things like uh, graphic artists, no, you do that, you help your uh, uh, other people, no, you volunteer, you offer your services uh, so that you can also enhance your skills. You can practice, no, when you say enhance your skills or your talents, no, you can practice. Okay, so like what we did during the Festival of Talents, like some of you uh, sang or danced, no, to uh, for the presentation so you lend your talent no you did not get any payment maybe you received uh, food but not payment no? so that is for you to to showcase and to also practice no your skills and talents and sometimes we do it just because no it's just uh, a way for us to uh to relax no sometimes uh the job is stressful or we feel overwhelmed then we do something that we love to do so that we can also distress or decompress what we call okay and so these are the things that we do no the things that we do because we love to do it no but what about those things that we don't like to do okay Next slide, please. Yeah. And so uh, our least favorite things to do, okay? Like, for example, our subjects in school. I'm sure, no, you have a lot of um, 
favorite subjects. But there's also that one or two subjects that you find difficult or that you're really not interested in. Uh, and sometimes you would ask, why do I need to study this? Okay, so what, what will it help me? Okay, so there are what we call direct or indirect, no? So direct meaning to say it is related. Okay, like for example, you if you want to be a journalist, you study English. If you want to be a an ambassador or a diplomat, then of course you have to study uh, history, no? Politics, no? Social uh, social studies. Okay. If you want to be an engineer, you study math. If you want to be a doctor, you study science. Okay. So those are the direct. Uh, reasons no or the uh, why we need to study this particular subject but what if i want to be a fashion designer no and do i really need to study math yes because uh, math indirectly no teaches us uh, some skills okay for example as a fashion designer you have to know uh, how much would address cost right like for example what i'm wearing so uh, how would you know as a fashion designer if this should cost 500 or 600? You need mathematics for that. As a chef, if you want to be a chef, you need mathematics because you need to, uh, for example, the, the recipe says uh, 500 grams, but your measuring cup, cup is, uh, let's say it's only 100 grams. So you have to multiply. I have a 100 gram uh measuring cup and the recipe calls for 500 grams of let's say sugar that's too sweet no that's sugar so you have to multiply one time 500 divided by 100 so you have to know mathematics right um why do i need to learn history okay uh so ah dates no when did magellan land in the philippines no uh when is the araw ng kagitingan what happened so it teaches us association no first uh this is the date what is the event associated in that date and how are we going to use that okay uh as a doctor you need to know first no, the patient's history okay what happened no, and history teaches us to be curious, to ask what happened. No? And if you want to be a policeman or a detective or an NBI agent or a spy, uh, we have to ask these questions. No? And like I said, association. No? So this is the event. No? If you want to be a doctor, this is, the, uh, this is the symptoms. Or this is, let's say, the patient uh, has this... Um, heart condition no so things like that okay um why do i need to know home economics i'm not going to be a chef why do i need to enroll in home economics no well, or why does the school offer home economics ah you need to learn how to sew no or to stitch because if you're going to be a surgeon that is part of your task no you don't just cut people you have to so also the wound right um and you have to also learn what we call fine motor skills and sewing teaches you how to do that no how to use your uh, fine motor is uh like when you um you use your uh, small cell phone and you, there are small key keypad no and like for example you have your big fingers no so you have to uh carefully uh, press no so you don't press press all the letters no so fine motor skills as when you uh, use your cubes no your uh, uno you get your cards or you get your blocks no when you play that those are fine motor skills no so you need that if you are going to be a doctor so that you don't uh, uh, cut the wrong uh, part body part no? and uh, if you want to also be uh, a pilot, no, you have to have um, fine motor skills because you have to press all those uh, things in the screen, no, so that you can fly the plane. Okay, so those are uh, what uh, home economic teaches us, no. Why you need to sew? No, it's not just uh, you need to sew 
because you are going to be a fashion designer someday. No. no. So what this is what we call indirect no? way of learning these things. Okay. Um, why do I need to learn computers? Well, of course, no, nowadays, uh, there are a lot of technology out there. So even as a doctor, no? as a doctor, um, you have to use certain machines. And if you don't know how to operate simple machine as a computer, then it would be difficult for you to use uh, other machines. No? Just a pilot also. And, okay. So what other things? No? Um, PE sometimes. We don't like PE, no? Uh, we don't like to dance, no? And, but um, those subjects, no, teaches us uh, other things aside from what we learn. No, aside from the knowledge that we learn from it, it also teaches us what we call indirect, no? Or uh, soft skills, which we will discuss later on. Okay, so in our, when we do our school projects, no, I don't like group presentation, I don't like storytelling, I don't like role playing. But what does it teach us? No, it teaches us confidence, no, it teaches us how to be a team player, okay, and it also teaches us how to be a leader. No, if you want to be a politician, if you want to be a manager, no, if you want to be a businessman, okay, so it also teaches us to. Um, communicate, okay? Because, uh, let's say, I'm going to be an accountant. I am going to be a computer programmer. I don't need to talk to people. I'm going to be a game design. Or I'm going to be a graphic artist. I just need to learn how to draw. Uh, I don't need to talk to people. Why do I need to be a team player? But because you need to sell your products, right? You have to uh, talk to a client, no? Uh, those people who will be buying, no, what you will be doing, no, who will buy the games, no, so you will have to uh, do a sales talk, no, so you, like we see in our, in the mall, uh, we have a salesperson who tells us the features of this. And if you uh, don't have the confidence to sell your product, then of course they won't notice it. Okay. And um, we also do presentations, no, like, um, like me, I'm doing this presentation right now. Huh? Um, a doctor also does presentations. No, he tells the audience what is he doing. No, we do our research. No, because uh, if you want to be an engineer, no, you have to do your research. No, so you have to look at, uh, no, for example, an uh, ECE, no, uh, electronic communication engineer. So you have to do your research. What are the materials that I will be using? How is this going to be connected to the task that I'm doing? So things like that. No? So those are the things, the projects or the homeworks that the teachers gives us that teaches us also these skills. Okay, so sports, no, sports it teaches us endurance, no, meaning to say how uh, uh how strong our body is no it for example dance huh? i know some of you don't like to dance no or don't like to play uh, basketball volleyball no but uh in dance it teaches you the correct posture like for example um when your PE teacher says oh stand like that or your hands should be positioned like this or when you say uh, in basketball this is the correct way of holding a ball or this is the correct way of holding a tennis racket so it teaches you a correct position so that you don't damage your body parts because some jobs need uh, for example clear eyesight no so athletes it's not only the athletes who need a good running body no Meaning to say, um, some jobs, like for example, if you're going to be a chef, you have to stand for long hours yeah, while you're cooking. If you're going to be a doctor, you have to stand for long hours. Uh, if you're going to be a pilot, you have to sit for, let's say, a, a long flight, no? uh, four-hour flight, five-hour flight, and you are just going to sit there. No? So um, you would get tired. No, so when you engage in sports, no, they teaches you, ah, my body can do this. Okay. And I have to take care of my body. I have to have enough sleep. I have to have enough uh, uh, nutrition, which also your home economics teaches you, no, nutrition. 
ah, this is the proper food to eat so that I can do this job. Okay? Uh, some jobs, no, like as a detective, firefighter, uh, pilot, no, um, a biologist, no, chemist, some of those jobs needs uh, for you to have a good eyesight. So you have to take care of your eyes, no? So as much as possible, um, take a rest, no? From the screen also. Don't look uh, like, for example, if you have a class, no? Uh, online class, don't use your gadget immediately. So let your eyes rest because some jobs needs a uh, for you to have a good eyesight. Okay, yeah, and so this is our least favorite thing to do, no? Household chores, washing dishes, uh, sweeping the floor, no? Or um, uh, what, uh, putting water in the water jug, no? So that we'll have cold water, something like that, no? But what does uh, household chores teach us? No? So household chores, no? Like, for example, washing the dishes, it teaches us how to be careful. No? So we don't want the plate to be broken. So it teaches us how to be careful because in all jobs, no, we have to learn how to, um, to be able to uh, uh, give attention to detail. No? Like for example, as an accountant, you cannot make a mistake no? when you do your encoding. When as a computer programmer, uh, there are codes that you need to do. There are uh, 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 codes when you say there are directions or instructions. It's, you cannot make a mistake because that would mean a different thing no? or a different output. No? So uh, when you wash your dishes, you pay attention to, ah, okay, so this fork uh, still uh, there's some uh rice no left behind so i have to clean it i have to wash it no and so when you do your laboratory in school you need to wash also your uh beaker your ter your uh thermometer no your uh, uh what we call that your microscope you have to be careful handling the microscope and if you are not careful you will break it right so you learn that uh, washing the dishes. Ah, okay, taking care of my siblings, taking care of my pet. It also teaches you not just skills, not just knowledge, but also virtues. It teaches you to be kind, to be, uh, to share, right? To, to care, no? Um, to love, no? It teaches you empathy because some jobs like mine, like teachers, you have to be uh, what we call compassionate no you have to be kind no you have to know how to relate to and that from uh, taking care of your siblings taking care of your pets no? um so in our subject these subjects no like in our uh uh, computer subjects, it does not just end what we from the books or from what the tells us. It also teaches us indirectly no, other things. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And so, sorry. Okay, so, okay, so when we go to the grocery. No, our Nutrition. Ah, this food uh, have too much sugar. That's good. Not good for my body. I'm not sure if I'm the one who lost my connection. No, Ayan. So it also teaches us what we call soft skills. No, um, what we need. No, in all jobs. No, we have what we call twenty fourth. Uh, 21st century skills. Yan. So, ako daw yung naglalag. Sorry. Yan. Okay. So, this is just the summary of what I discussed uh, earlier. No? So, it also teaches us memorization. No? How to memorize, especially history, 
mathematics formula, science, no English, okay. Um, it teaches us how to write, no how to write. Uh, it also teaches us, okay. Um, next slide, please. So it teaches us also the things that we cannot, no. And so this is. Uh, I hope the video will play. So this is an example on how uh, science so no, and art. Red bell peppers that we've chopped up. So we're just going to start blending that up. Okay. So this is a, a video of uh, a chef. No, but it's not just you see. We want a really yeah. fine liquid out of this. Yeah, so it's not just so now it's not just using skills as a got here. So this is what's called a super huh? bag so we can strain this liquid and get all the bits out and get a beautiful liquid can be a little messy you know in the old days you'd use a muslin cloth but you see you just get this beautiful red pepper juice and the great thing about it it's still fresh we haven't cooked it we've retained everything in there all its natural flavor and you can see now we've just got this Beautiful red pepper juice. Okay, so he's not just using his skills as a chef, but also and science. It's important no? when doing this sort of thing that the, the measurements are exact. Mathematics, no not, measurement. Suddenly you'll find things don't work. The 200 grams of our red pepper juice goes in. Now we've got a little sugar just to sweeten it up. We've got our wonderful white balsamic, the prolabato, which is going to go in, and we know that's our secret weapon to making everything taste great. And then we've got here two grams of agar, which are going to go in exactly measured out. Goes in there like that. And because it's red, people are going to expect it to be hot. So I'm going to put just a little bit of Tabasco in there just to give it that little bit of spice. And now we're going to mix that up. For about 30 seconds. So we've mixed that thoroughly. We're going to pour it back into a container. And as you can see, there's a lot of air in there. So now we'll need to let it rest for at least 15 minutes to half an hour for that air to just slowly dissipate out of there. And the last thing that we need, ready for our caviar, is some sugar syrup. So this is 50% sugar, 50% water that we've just brought to the boil and simmered for about three minutes. And that's what we're going to store our caviar in. Then online you can buy a caviar maker. Comes with a little syringe, and we just put that on the end there. Make sure the syringe is pulled in. Rest this on top here like this. Okay, so now we've filled up here with caviar. Bring our calcic bath over, which is cold, obviously. And then we just slowly, you see all our caviar going in there? Now we can make all sorts of different flavors. We could do apple juice, we could do balsamic vinegar. There's all sorts of different caviar balls that we could make. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah really, really cool. cool. So we just let it sit in there for a bit and you can see we've got these fantastic caviar balls. So it's bringing a little theater to the table, which is what I like. I've strained it out of the calcic bath. Now I'm just going to pop it into a little bit of mineral water here and I'm just rinsing that calcic off there. The calcic bath. Tasty, isn't it? Okay, so that's our salad made. So now we'll make some gazpacho sorbet using liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen you need to treat like it's boiling water. It's as dangerous as boiling water. In fact, it's more dangerous. If you dip your hand in there, take it out, it'll be completely frozen and crack off. So it's really dangerous stuff. So here we've got a flask with liquid nitrogen in it. You wanna come around here, Stu, and give me a hand? Now I just want you to hold this bowl like that. Just hold it there, that's it. So I'm pouring the liquid nitrogen in there, which is freezing our gazpacho. And it's almost like it's cooking it, but it's cooking it with cold rather than heat. You can see now it's turning into sorbet, right? It's freezing it. 
And the reason that I like to use ni liquid nitrogen to make this sorbet is because it will be velvety smooth. Whereas if I did it in an ice cream machine, the ice crystals would be bigger. But I want velvety smooth. And now just to finish off, I'm just gonna take some of this sorbet just a little bit and pop it on top here. Just a little bit sitting up on top there. Just got a little bit of purple basil just to sit on top there. So there you have it. What do you think of that? There's a bit of molecular gastronomy going on, all using natural products, really good flavors. And so that's an example of a chef no, using mathematics, art, and science, no? Uh, so, you know, to you have to know the freezing point, boiling point, no? So, it doesn't mean that you uh, want to be a chef, you can only learn home economics. So, you have to also pay attention to other subjects. And at the same time, uh, you can also use, no, the knowledge or the skills that you learn um, for other courses that you might want to take in the future. Okay? So, uh, next video. So, I hope it place also so this one a man uses history as a doctor the guide wires in place I'm preparing to deliver the valve okay you you have to stop if that valve goes through get out of here murphy no if that valve goes through he'll die i Call thought security. it was an aortic dissection but i was wrong the cold feet are from a coarctation no no no, no, it's too close. You're too close. Stop! Stop! Stop, please, stop! BB spiking 200 over 100, heart rate's up, he's gonna stroke. Give him nitro and cardine. Pulling out. BB's dropping. He's starting to stabilize. Okay. Dr. Murphy? Go on. Dr. Nakano did not make a mistake in the bypass. He did everything right. But Mr. Hill has a congenital narrowing of the abdominal aorta. He's had that correctation for years, but never knew because his body compensated for the poor circulation by raising his blood pressure, which caused his heart to deteriorate, requiring a bypass. The stronger repaired heart put pressure on the valve and his blood pressure dropped. No more compensation. His feet got cold. And I could get the guide wire up there, but the valve delivery system would be too big to fit through the coarctation without damaging the vessel. Yes. We'll have to open them up. And the valve will have to be replaced directly through surgery. I hope you'll join us for that. Okay, so as you can see, no, he used history. What is the patient's history? These are the patient's uh, symptoms. No? So he associated that no, when uh, when they learn association in your Aralipan Lipunan, in your English classes, in your mathematics problem solving, and ICT, no, uh, computer technology. You see all the machines there. As a nurse, you don't just assist the doctors in the operation or you don't just assist patients in the emergency room. You also have to know how to use all the machines, no, how to read all those uh these numbers in the machine no and as you can see at the start the doctor is operating using a machine no they did not open up the patient's uh, chest no they did not cut uh, but they rather used a machine so that's again no fine motor skills you learn that in your home economics in your uh, tle no when you when you do your um uh, bead works no uh when you do your uh, hammering no yeah and so uh, if you want to be an orthopedic surgeon, you need to know how to use a hammer because sometimes you use a hammer to push bones, no? So to repair it, no? So those are the things that you need to learn. Uh, also, as a, a technician, no? You have to learn all um, the use of the tools, no? In one in one um, episode of a medical drama, uh, there is no operating room. So the patient has a 
tools, no? Yung hammer, drill, no? So, they have to use that for operation. So, if you don't know how to use that, uh, or if you don't pay attention in your TLA class, uh, you don't know how to use a hammer, you don't know how to use an engraver, no? So, aside from the skills that you learn from it, you also develop your body, no? Ah, you have to be careful in, in doing your uh, digging, no? When you do your computer, it's not just when you go computer design or game design, it's not just drawing. You also have to know how to encode, no? Uh, when you go uh, as a teacher, you need to learn how to uh, use the computer, how to use the laptop, no? Canva, and all of these things. No? As a guidance counselor, we don't just do coaching, but we also do presentations. We write reports, no? So we need to learn how to type, how to encode, uh, what are the different uh, applications, no? Word, Excel, no? So those are the things that you learn that you can use in whatever course or career you may have in the future okay and uh last, next slide please so lastly no knowing what are our least favorite or the things that we are not uh, comfortable doing the things that we don't know how to do uh, uh, helps us discover our limitations because we are we cannot be good in everything right we are not a man perfect no? Uh, there are things that you know how to do well. There are things that you don't know how to do well. But don't lose uh, hope. No, Don't be uh, too sad about it because it will help you realize, ah, these are the things that I am not very good at. So probably this course may not be good for me. Okay? Like me. No? My, my story is that uh, I wanted to be an engineer. So I'm quite good in mathematics. But um, I cannot draw a straight line. No, my writing, even when I write uh, in the blackboard, no, it's not in a straight line. So uh, if I wanted to be an engineer, uh, that's not something that I cannot do. Uh, I I love fashion, but I cannot draw. No, I cannot just uh, tell my clients, um, this is my vision for your house, no, but I cannot show them that, so that is not the job for me, okay? I wanted to be a doctor, but um, my attitude, mm, I don't like yucky things, so I learned that in, in my science class. Mm, I may be good in science, but I'm not, I cannot be, uh, no, no, I cannot do yucky things, no? Uh, I wanted to be like the flash, no, a forensic scientist, but uh, that means collecting evidences, no looking to trash, uh, something that I want to do. So again, no X, no X. That is not my career. That is not my job. So that's why I landed in human resources because there is mathematics, there is science. No, you do research, you do writing, um, you do uh, statistics, no mathematics, and you also get to do the things that you love. Okay, so. Um, this is why it is important for us to understand um, what is it that I also love doing and at the same time, what is it that I don't uh, find uh, interesting so that you'll know uh, when you decide to choose a course or a club no, or a, a TLE specialization when you join your high school, uh, you will know uh, this is something that I need to improve on because I will use this in my future career, or this is something that even if I try, I really cannot do well here. So maybe that career is not possible for me. So what is the alternative? No, so when you, this, they say, you no, know, when you close a door, you open a window. So there are other opportunities. Like I said, there are thousands of different type of jobs and occupations that you can go to. And um, it, it would, uh, take you how many lifetimes to go through all of that so you have plenty of options and opportunities out there so you if you need help no you can ask your teacher you can ask parents your siblings your neighbors your relatives and of course no us in the guidance center uh to help you decide hmm, what could my possible future 
college course maybe or what is my possible senior high school uh, track or strand no? so we can help you with that you just have to ask okay and don't be afraid and don't be shy to ask okay and as an as i end my talk let me leave you with this a uh, quote next slide please and so the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty for your their dream so don't limit yourself no dream big okay because your future is what you make of it also what you will be doing now what you will be studying now will have an impact or will have a relationship to what you will be doing in the future okay so thank you and good morning so the floor i'm giving it back to miss joanne thank you very much miss vanessa for enlightening us on the career and life skills actually i really love the last slide you presented to us and it also reminds me of the famous quote from john wooden he keeps on reiterating us that uh, don't let what you can do to stop you from doing what you can do so what this means is say someone says you're not good at something that doesn't mean you actually aren't if if you try your hardest or or to any goal in your life you should be able to overcome even if you can't uh, do anything it doesn't mean that you need to stop from practicing on that goal as we all know practice makes perfect so don't just give up on uh, something the first time you do it just because you're not the best keep practicing and you will figure out how to do it and how to do it with ease remember the hardest goals to overcome always have the best reward because if you put a lot of thought into something it's going to mean a lot to you so that's it thank you very much everyone for patiently listening to our resources speaker and i hope you learned something from our today's session so let us now proceed to our q a so again uh kindly visit our canva live and enter the code 745140 and then we're going to show your uh questions on our screen if you have any questions and thoughts for about uh, uh, our uh, session for this morning so you may not uh if you want to include your name it's okay uh so anyway these questions or insights may be flashed on the screen later on so that our speaker will uh, address all your queries so by the way we would like to thank the pupils and students who are sending their heart emojis to our Canva live. So may I know if uh, we already have uh, questions coming into in our Canva live. Okay, so Miss Vanessa, uh, there is a question from Zar. Teacher, if you need to learn science to be an engineer, engineer, why? Ah, okay. First of all, because it is a requirement, no. And secondly, in science, no, there is a relationship with mathematics, no. For example, ah, uh, chemistry, or physics, okay. Um, industrial. If you want to be an industrial engineer, what does you what does an industrial engineer do? You are, um, in terms of the. Uh, foundation of the buildings no you are going to know uh, what is the good position of the of this particular beam no if you're going to be a civil engineer you're going to build houses so you learn science because in in uh, as a civil engineer no you have to know ah what are what is the density what is the weight no uh, and you don't just learn that in mathematics because in mathematics there are some limitations no? so in mathematics you learn how to compute uh, you learn how to uh, use the formula but in science that is where you learn uh, physics that is where you learn uh, the weight of an object or what is the chemical component of this particular like for example a cement uh, what is the chemical component what would make it hard uh, so as a civil engineer, you have to know that. And you just, you just don't learn in, uh, mathematics. You also learn science. Uh, as a computer engineer, why do I need to learn science? Because uh, as a computer engineer, you have to see the relationship of your programs or applications. And some applications have uh, practical uses. No, uh, You can use your 
uh, computer application knowledge to build machines for for doctors for let's say your not just your apps or gadgets but for uh, like you see no in the video there are machines no so you build a monitor for doctors you need a uh, 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 ECG machine no and so uh, the engineer who invented uh, the pace no yung uh, when you have a uh, uh, heart condition and you need a pacemaker no that is what would help you your heartbeat no so uh, it has to be uh, kumbaga, uh, it's not just mathematics but also science but uh, a, computer, a combination of computer engineer a scientist uh, biologist help create those machines thank you very much miss vanessa why do we need to pick a career or job and what if we don't have any interest at the moment okay so why do you need a career it is a generic term no like um it basically it simply says uh what do you want to be or what do you want to do now after school let's say for example uh when you're finished with high school, when you're finished with college, what do you want to do after? So it can be a job, it can be a career, no? Um, like I said, no, it doesn't matter what you want to do. What's important is that uh, you do what you love. But sometimes there are things that, uh, like for example, you don't have any interest at the moment. You don't know yet no, what you are good at. You don't know yet what... Uh, uh, are the things that you love to do yet. So you, at this point, do you do explore? Like what Miss Joanne said earlier, no, try and try, no, try to, to explore, okay? So we have a lot of different clubs, no? So try to go from one to another, no? Maybe you will discover, ah, this is what I am good at, no? So this is also important why we need to pay attention in class so that we know um hmm, maybe this is not something that i can be interested in ah i am good pala in because you know like for me i am i only discovered that i am good in math when i was in high school already now when i was in elementary school i really hated math but when i was in high school i discovered ah okay i'm really good at because that's when i started um paying attention uh not because I'm not interested in math, but because I I look at it as a a just another uh, subject, no. But like I said, no. You explore what are because I'm already good in this subject. Uh, what are the other things that I can do? So that at that time, no. Um, you will understand. Ah, okay. Uh, this is my interest, pala. Or maybe I have many interests. So how can I pinpoint? No? So, uh, again, no, when you go to college, uh, you will know, uh, okay, this is what are the things that I can do. Sometimes there are jobs that really, uh, like, I probably you've heard, no, see si Steve Jobs. Uh, or, I mean, sorry, see si Mark Zuckerberg, he did not finish college. No? But his career now is to develop, no, develop applications. No? But, um but it is his interest, no, to computer, his curiosity, the things that he also learned in school. Thank you very much, Miss Vanessa. And then for our last question, by the way, um, there are lots of questions coming into our uh, Canva Live, but I think uh, we will just address it for uh, with a general question, Miss Vanessa. And then, by the way, if you think your question was uh, not answered, please. Uh, you may message our guidance office. Would that be okay, Miss Vanessa? Because yes, we, need to, we sure. really need to cut the the session because it's already twelve o'clock. So, for our last question, what can we do to achieve our dream job? Ah, okay. So first, no, you have to uh, uh, study course no you have to pay attention in class you have to also take care of your body you need to rest uh you have because uh, sleep no if you don't get enough sleep it would help uh it would um uh, make you distracted no your memory station no ayan so it would affect your memory station so you need to have plenty of sleep you need to eat and you also need to play no you also need to rest um you need to have fun you have to enjoy because when you say dream job 
it means you have this vision of yourself you, you have a uh, an imagination no but if you don't play no playing is important because it will um uh, uh uh, it will help you use your imagination. No, it will help you be creative. It will also help you uh, express yourself. No? Uh, this is what I want to do. Okay, so it's not just uh, all study. It's not just all uh, taking care of our health, but also it is um, getting that idea. No, um, uh, using our imagination. No, using our creativity. Um, that will help us um, step by step, step by step. So right now you're still in elementary school. So this is what you need to do. So when you're in high school, that is when you start to decide, ah, okay, so this is what I'm going to do for my senior high school. And then when you're in high school, this is what I'm going to do when I'm gone. So step by step, uh, you learn it step by step. Take it one step at a time. So like Miss Joanne said earlier, try and try and explore. Okay. And one of these days, you will be at your at the point where you can say, "Ah, I am here already." But in the future, okay. Thank you very much, Miss Vanessa, for answering all our questions. And once again, dear Polinians, thank you very much for all your questions. Okay, so at this juncture, may we express our gratitude to our dear speaker by awarding the certificate of appreciation. On behalf of St. Paul College of Makati, headed by Sister Mirna B. Castante, SPC, we would like to express our gratitude to Ms. Vanessa L. Agris for accepting our invitation to be the speaker in our lead session. Allow me to read the citation of the certificate. Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Ms. Vanessa L. Agris for sharing her invaluable experiences and expertise during the Life Skills Enhancement and Development Session given this Monday of February 2022 at St. Paul College of Makati. Signed, Mr. Cedric B., Student Affairs Team Leader, and Sister Mirna Castante, SPC, School Directress Principal. Thank you very much, Miss Vanessa. Let us give her again a virtual clap. Thank you very much. So for our uh, gentle reminders for our uh, activity for this uh, noon, for the third lead session worksheet, here's the activity for your cluster. So you may use your lead worksheet shared by your advisor or HTI teacher. So, and this is our guide question for today. What do you want to become when you grow up? Draw or cut any picture related to your dream or career job. Write at least one sentence to describe the picture or drawing on your worksheet. Submit the lead worksheet to Janio. Assign Hele or ICT teachers for each level will be creating an assignment for submitting your worksheet. Follow up and reminders will be done also by the HTI teacher. For any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to your assigned HTI teacher. And also, may we request you to please answer the evaluation form for us. Of course, uh, we would like to know your thoughts and suggestion for today's activity. The evaluation link will be shared by your advisor. Before the session ends, we would like to thank the people who made this program possible. Of course, to Sister Mirna Castante, SPC, Mr. Raymond Andre Samonte, Mr. Cedric D., our resource speaker, advisors, and subject teachers who assisted in the implementation of the program, and most especially to our dear students and parents, and of course, to our uh, subject team leader, Ms. Clary Sossi. To formally end this session, let us express our gratitude to our Lord. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful day, sharing your love with our teacher and classmates. 
Thank you for the strength and excellence you gave us to learn and understand our lessons. Thank you to our teachers, parents, and classmates who shared to us the joy of learning. Amen. Mary, our mother and model, pray for us. St. Paul, our patron, pray for us. Father Louis Chavez and the First Sisters, intercede for us. May the love of Christ impel us, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This wraps up today's session. May God bless us all. Once again, I am Miss Mary John Marquez, Caritas Christi, Urget Nos. <laughs>